Ah, here's her. Rolling hills, sheep, and uh, two massive chimneys. What is this? This is Donaskin. In the 1840s, coal and iron were discovered in these beautiful areas. And an ironworks was established here at Waterside. This became a massive industrial complex. Railways connected the mines up in the hills to the ironworks, which was here. Pit villages at Corby Craigs, Lethen Hill and Ben Watt were established up in the hills where the mines were. All that made the mighty blast furnaces here at Donetsky. This uh, beautiful sandstone building right here was the original blast engine house, uh, which fed the blast furnaces. Now, on the other side of the side, these are now brick kilns. So, in 1921, the ironworks closed and the site became a brickworks. So, when the site was converted for uses of brickworks, that uh, sandstone blast engine house was converted. Uh, for use in the brick making process and a pan mill was built on the hill above it where all the clay was crushed and that fed into the uh, fed by gravity into what had been the engine house where the, the bricks were moulded into brick shapes from there of course they would then go into the uh, brick kilns on either side and this is one of the actual bricks that was uh, produced here and DICO stood for Dalmelons and Iron Company so the, the brand even though it wasn't producing iron anymore it was still used on the bricks. After World War II the mines at up in the hills at Ben Watt closed. The villages of Colby Craig's Ben Watt and Lathen Hill were abandoned. The residents would move to the brand new uh, council estate at Pakna. And those villages were just left. The miners' road, Corby Craigs, is still there. Uh, Lethen Hill, Ben Watt, there's nothing there anymore other than war memorials. The brickworks closed in 1976 amidst a deep recession in the construction industry, but partly due to a deterioration in brick quality as the best clay resources had been exhausted. Even after the brickworks closed, the mines in the area remained in production. So, Waterside then became kind of the home for the National Coal Board, uh, and this was the, the centre of the, uh, the local railway net. Shed behind me, which you can just see over my shoulder, that was built in the 1960s uh, to replace the earlier Dow Mailings and Iron Company shed. Uh, This site became the centre of the National Coal Board operations in the 1960s and 70s. So then uh, a washery was built further up the site, which we'll pass later on the train. And this lasted past the end of steam, steam on British Railways, ended in 1968. But steam still kept going on this site into the 1970s. So the last deep mines in the area closed in 1978, <laughs> along with the washery and all the steam railway network. That wasn't the end. In 1988, a brand new open cast mine opened at Charmiston. 
My dad actually worked there. He was a site engineer there uh, in the late, easy, late 80s, early 90s. And that was when I first came here. Um, around about the same time, the railway was reopened and we start seeing modern um, sort of trains of HAAs coming down the line. And around right about 1990, the Donaskan site was opened as a museum under the Dalmelton District Conservation Trust. At the same time, what had been the Mini Bay Colliery up the road became home of the Ayrshire Railway Preservation Group. And the plan at the time was to run a steam train between the two sites. This didn't happen various reasons, including uh, having the Charmiston home cast right in the middle of the line. So, the long term plan didn't work out. In 2002, uh, the ARPG site at Minimay closed and everything was moved here to Danaskin. And it's been operating as um, recently changed the name. It was the Scottish Industrial Railway Centre, now it's the Doon Valley Railway. Around about 2004 or 5, I think, when the actual Donaskin Museum itself closed, which was a great disappointment because this site has so much potential as a museum, but its location is part of the problem because we're in the middle of nowhere here. So the, there just wasn't the you know, number of people coming through the door to actually make it pay, which is quite sad. But that period kind of coincided with the ARPG relocating from Minivay to Donaskin, so the railway group's really kind of taken over at least the railway part of the site as the Dune Valley Railway. And that's how it's continued until this year. Um, now, 
the workshops where the current museum and cafe are have been put up for sale by the present owner and you've probably seen it on Laurie's Mechanical Marvels there's been a big fundraising uh, campaign to actually buy the site unfortunately the target of £250,000 was not met so the future is kind of hanging in the balance here but the railway still own the platform, the station, the platform, the engine shed so they're going to continue but in what form we don't know I don't know.